Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayanne, and this is The Groom, and we just watched The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. And we actually watched this right back here in the studio because we used the HBO <laughs> Max app. Because I bought HBO Max for a month solely to watch this movie. And apparently you have to um, use the upgraded version. You can't just use the base package for HBO Max. Yeah, warning to everybody. If you want to watch one of the movies that came out in, th in theaters and is also playing on HBO Max, you have to get the expensive version because they will only play it in like the higher resolution, which you can only get with the more expensive package. Of course. Of course. So. So The Conjuring 3 is, of course, an Ed and Lorraine Warren story which is based off true events, which they do reference a lot in the ending credits, which is cool. They are trying to... It, it's essentially they're, they're trying to get this poor kid acquitted of charges because the devil made him do it. Haha, ha, I used the name of the movie. And <laughs> the fact that they were kind of using... Well, every time you go into a court of law and you have to swear in, you have to swear in on the Bible, so you're admitting that God's real, so you kind of have to admit the devil's real. It's a really good point, though. I mean, it's like that, That's a solid point. Yeah. It doesn't start out necessarily with the murder happening. It gives a tiny bit of backstory, then it goes, you know, to the action and then we do get a lot of other backstories. We get a, a lot of other plots in there, which is really cool. I don't really know how much we can say without spoiling a whole lot, because I don't want to ruin the movie for anyone. I mean, it, it's they're so gross. Like we can't really divulge into it without like they don't show. I love the fact that they really don't show a lot in the trailer. They don't. They it's, show. It's it's really good how little they yeah. show in the trailer. And it's confusing. You don't... The trailer doesn't give anything away until you see, like, the one split scene from the trailer. You're like, oh, okay, that makes sense now. So. I feel like the most of the trailer was the kid on the waterbed, which was a cool effect. Give me a night, Nightmare on Elm Street vibes. Yeah, definitely. So that, that, that was awesome. I really liked that. I feel like I haven't trusted a waterbed since Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> <laughs> Just... I don't know. That and I don't think I would ever be able to sleep on one because it moved for like 30 minutes after you breathe too hard. Yeah, I, I know. It's, it seems terrible. Let us know. Do you have water beds? What are your experiences? I feel like sleeping next to me on a water bed, you would just eventually get floated off of it. I'd hit a tidal wave and just go <laughs> into the wall. Um. All right, so what did you like about the movie? Without giving anything away. Oh, I like that it's not set up how the other two Conjuring movies are. I I enjoyed that they went a different route with it. Obviously, they had to go a different route with it if they wanted to stay somewhat close to the actual uh, true crime story. Mm -hmm. I liked the... I really liked some of the camera angles. They were really cool. There's one shot in a morgue where they have the camera pretty much... It's like kind of focused on the tiles, but kind of focused up. And I just, it caught my eye. It was a really cool looking shot. Um, I, I mentioned this while we were watching the movie that in like every Conjuring movie and also in the Insidious universe, there's always a song that they keep recalling to. And then in your everyday life, when you're working in a doctor's office and you hear that song, that's all <laughs> you can think about. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like they did that in, um, what's the, 1301, the Stephen King movie, where it's the, the Carpenter's song, It's Only <laughs> Just Begun, and now every time I hear that song, I'm just like, what? You know, like it, it has that effect on you. Um, I may be listening to Blondie a little differently now. Mm -hmm. I, oh, man. Uh, I felt like it was, like I said, it was shot you know, pretty nicely. Unfortunate for me, there were a lot of creepy scenes that were in the dark that I could not tell what was happening. And luckily, I have a partner that's very understanding and can kind of 
see when that's gonna happen. I, and, I kept pointing at the screen yeah. and going, it, "This is in the background." Yeah, look, look behind that person. There's something there. And then when it would show itself, if I couldn't tell what it was, then you would describe it to me, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. I did it without asking to. Yeah. I'm used to this now. <laughs> what did you like about the movie? I like, as a fully sighted person, I love the background stuff. I love the stuff that just is kind of like over their shoulder in the way back. And if you like, you know, I didn't see everything. Uh, like I didn't, I didn't see everything that was in the background, but I remembered real fast that I was watching a Conjuring movie. So I started looking in the back for everything and I was like, what is that in the back there? But it was... I really liked that. I really liked the... I really liked... Oh, my God. I, I can't talk about... I don't, I don't know what to say. Because this movie, like, I can't give anything away. And a lot of the stuff I liked would completely give away the movie. But it's... I... Like, she's right. It was shot very, very well. I really liked the way it was shot. The story was great. I loved the way they portrayed the story... Uh, the real, the real life, the real life story. I liked the way it started with a. Li I think it gave the perfect amount of backstory, not too much, not too little. Like you knew what was going on when the movie start when the movie started, and that's how the movie starts with like the backstory scenes. It starts with like an actual exorcism, exactly, and it's. And you don't quite know what you're in for for the rest of the movie because you're like, how does that correlate to what they're saying? Like, how does that, mm -hmm. how do they intertwine? Yeah, so it was, and the thing, I like, the one thing I like, this was a two-hour movie, and it didn't feel like a two-hour movie. It was that good of a movie that, like, I really didn't, like, look down at my watch and be like, you know, what time, I, I remember we stopped... And that's the first time I looked at my watch. And I was like, "Oh my god, we're already in, we're already over an hour into this movie." I was like, "Are you serious?" Because I was chugging water. I'm yeah. like, "I'm not gonna make it if we don't yeah. pause the movie." Pause. <laughs> but it was like, you know, and we paused it like an hour and five minutes, and I was like, "I can't believe we've been watching this movie for an hour and five minutes." Okay, one thing I can say that I really liked about this movie, without giving it away, is I love the anxiety of this movie. Like, I was sitting here, like, like tense. I was, was like, tense. oh, my God, like, what's going to happen? I love that about Conjuring movies. A lot, a lot of the Conjuring and Insidious movies really do that, where you're like, what's going to happen next? The jump scares were clean. They got her. They always get me. The thing with the, like, what you were saying about the anxiety, there's, like, three different kinds of anxiety they give you. Mm -hmm. There's that big build up musical anxiety where mm -hmm. you're just waiting and it's like the strings and it's like nee, 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 and you're like when's it gonna happen or it's that anxiety when there's completely no sound mm -hmm. and you're just like holding your breath waiting and then for you're it. like and then you're like crunch Creak. like people like walking on like leaves yeah or like a door creaking open i love it or it's that slow turn because L Lorraine mm -hmm. can, can see things the, that other people can't see. And you know when she starts to turn her head and then they do that other angle and she's mm -hmm. like, you just see the whites of her eyes and you're like, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah, because she does I that like it. slow like look over her shoulder and then it snaps to the other camera angle. I love that. That is awesome. So yeah, that's definitely something I would like. Dislikes. Um, I, I don't know that it's necessarily a dislike, but it's starting to get a little old. When they do that thing, you good? No, the dislike, it's starting to get a little old. It's starting to get a little old. When it's like this scary thing, this possible scary thing, and then they're like, bam! And you're just like, stop it. <laughs> I'm over that. It's the sleight of hand trick. It's like, I can't remember what. Look at this over here. Look at this over here. Look at this here. Wham! I can't remember what movie it is. I think it's like a. It has to be a cheesy 80s movie because I was really into it. But the biggest scare that got me was just like something popped up in shot. So it's like in your face. And I screamed and threw whatever I was holding because it was just so out of nowhere. 
I can't freaking remember what the movie's called, oh, but I can God. like kind of remember the scene in my just burned in there. I love it. And I feel I like really they don't really do that in modern horror movies anymore, probably because it is such a fucking cheap scare. Like that's literally the entirety of jump scares. But I feel like that's something that look here and then this jumps out kind of thing is something that they've done in like every Conjuring movie, mm-hmm. which it's fine. But now I'm kind of expecting it. Not necessarily a dislike, but it's kind of like, well, it's not going to get me as much now because I know that it's the old magician's trick. I'm going to, you know, move my hands over here so you don't see me putting cards in my mouth kind of thing, which is, I mean, it's fine. Um, I kind of hated that child actor. I feel bad saying that. What, the one that played the eight, eight year old? David, yeah. I was just like, what? Just throw the whole kid out. Just throw him out. Yeet! Just, I I feel bad saying that. There was something just about him that I was like, I don't know. Maybe it was the contorting. I don't Uh, know. So. There's one part where, like, he's freaking out trying to, like, stab his parent or whatever. And all I could recall was there was this, I love the 90s thing on VH1. And it was D. Snyder talking about Chucky saying, it's a doll, just step on it. And for some reason that popped into my head because he was so short. It's a I was kid, just like, just, just kick him into the wall. Like, he's full of demons. Um, <laughs> what did you dislike about this movie? I have a similar dislike. I also did not like the child actor. I did not like the character of the, the, ki- of the kid's girlfriend. Debbie? I, I hated her. Donna? Debbie. Whatever the hell her name was. I think her name was Debbie. I think it was Debbie. I did not like her. For the, why? The, the part during... The part... part in the prison... Towards the she, end? Yeah, towards the end where she's like, It's okay. It's okay. It's, bitch, it's, it's not, not okay. okay. It is not okay. Like, stop... Like, like, like she just... She had this, like... Like, she was talking him through, like, an Ill, illness... Well, the fucker is contorting I mean, and elevating. It is not okay. I don't know that she was saying it was okay as much as no, she was she's screaming like, for the guards. And the yeah. guards were like, what? Yeah, that is, <laughs> I love that. That's the most realistic thing. All the crazy stuff that's going on in that room, the guards are are in like, are behind glass in the control. Like, yeah, no, I'm not going in there. I, I love as, how the... As the, a former prison, prison guard, that is 100% accurate. When she had the, was it a... The preacher? The pastor? The priest. The priest? I don't know anything oh, about they, they religion. They called him the prison chaplain. He was the, the chaplain when yeah. he was reading, you know, from his Bible and the lights, like, all in unison flicker several times. And she looks at him and he's like, it's it's the wiring, you know, <laughs> state, state facilities. Building. And I was like... <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that is so accurate. It's accurate. <laughs> so, like, I just, I didn't like her character... I just, ugh, she just annoyed me. As far as the... Just the whole time. Without spoiling anything, the direction that this film took, did you like this over the other two Conjuring films? What do you mean the direction that it took? There were specific things going on in the other two movies. This one is not... Oh, yeah, One yeah. of these things is not like the other. One of these things, one of these things is different. Did, I like it. I, I liked it because it was different. I liked it because they didn't try to bastardize the story to make it fit in to make it fit with the other two movies. A lot of times when you have and I will use the example of one of my favorite books turned into a movie, you hate them because they're starring Tom Hanks, but the Robert Langdon saga. Okay, the book Angels and Demons versus the movie Angels and Demons, they changed main characters plot storyline they they the way stuff progressed in that they changed all of it to fit more with the da vinci code movie and i hated that and i love the fact that the conjuring did not do that they didn't try to they didn't try to find another ed and lorraine warren story that fit with the other two movies they literally went with like one of the most interesting stories 
because this this is this is a based on a true story. The Arnie the Arnie Johnson trial. I don't think his name was really Arnie Johnson, but we when I was when I was going for uh, one of my college degrees, we talked about this case because it was the first time that demonic possession was ever used as a defense, which is a huge landmark in the criminal justice system. So we talked about this. So the fact that they, you know, they never mentioned it was the Warrens, but it all kind of clicks together now. Like, watching the movie, I was like, yeah, yeah, we learned about this. But I like the fact that they went, they didn't change up the story to match the other two movies. The only, pretty much the only really similarity between the first two movies and this movie is Ed and Lorraine. So, in so. the actual, like, case, was were there the other aspects that were in the movie? Mm -hmm. Or Really? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes, the case did... The, the, the movie's fairly accurate towards what the case was, including the, the, the outcome. So, the outcome of, of the case is also, like, spot on. So, but I'm not going to tell you what that is. You have to watch a movie. Pay your $15. Would you want to see another Conjuring movie? Oh my god, yeah, I love out? these. I, I yeah. know it's not. I know they're gonna run out like of stories. everyone's jam, but I cats. I really, really enjoy the Conjuring films. Mm -hmm. I like the Conjuring universe. Um, I hate Annabelle just because I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't like dolls. dolls I mean, and mirrors. I think the the only one I haven't seen is La Llorona. I have not seen that one. I recently saw The Nun. I really like Insidious too. They always kind of feel like the same movie to me because of the actor. Similar. Yeah, because of the. Pat, what is it, Patrick Wilson? Yeah, it's just it's, you know. I just see him as Ed Warren now, which mm -hmm. is which is cool. I don't mind that. I liked that they, they definitely delve deeper into their love story, mm -hmm. their fictional love story, which was really, really cute. <laughs> the Ed's health aspect of everything was a very nice twist. I really liked that. I like the fact that she had to say vasodilators and couldn't say the actual name of the medication. I was like, what? Is it? Well, I mean, like, it has a it has a, a trade name and a uh, generic. Nope, nope, they could have said the generic, but they were like, nah. Nope, nope we're not paying anybody. No, thank you. <laughs> so, all right, so what do you rate this? I'd probably give this... Hmm. Probably like a four out of five. I really enjoyed this movie. I, at first, wasn't like super keen on the twist in the film. But it did grow on me. Um, I will be watching this when it comes out, when I can buy the physical copy. I would definitely watch uh, this yeah. again. I'm having another eye surgery in two days. So I have just what's left in my right eye right now. So I'm hoping, you know, fingers crossed, by the time this comes out in physical format, I'll be able to see out of both eyes and then perhaps won't have to have someone letting me know what to look for or what's happening when I can't infer it. So I'm pretty psyched about that. I will. And I, it'll be nice to watch it on the bigger TV yeah. out in the living room with the DVD player. So. And I would love to just like have a conjuring, just specifically the conjuring movie marathon and just watch all the films together. Or, you know, we could do them in the the chronological the order. timeline order that they're supposed to be mm -hmm. starting with I think that would start with the nun which would yeah. be cool yeah I think it starts with the nun then it goes to Annabelle creation because isn't the Annabelle creation like the origin story of the doll is there Annabelle creations and Annabelle origins I don't remember I have oh. like a one of those multi pack things mm -hmm. from Target. That I got. <laughs> Sponsor me, Target. <laughs> Please. Um, I would give this a uh, four and a half out of five. This is not the best movie I've ever seen, but this has definitely, this has definite, in order to get a four, a 4.5 out of me, it has to be very minimal things I don't like about it, which there were very few, very minimal things. I just didn't, maybe it's the actress, I don't know. 
Maybe it's just the way the character was written. That's really the only thing I didn't like. Um, and it definitely has rewatch value to it. Like like you said, like you couldn't see everything background. I didn't see everything at first. So I'd like to go back now that I know to look for stuff in the background and see how much see how many things I've missed. Because I could have missed stuff in the background, so I kinda wanna watch it again, you know, now that I know to look in the background. So that's, you know, definitely has some type of rewatch value to it at least one more at least one more time and standpoint it was a good movie even if this was the only conjuring movie like if this was the first one they came out with i, I would still love this movie i feel like that could be said for all the films to yeah, be honest it, it, like one two and three like you could watch all of them not having watched the other ones and still have a good time to be to be honest this is probably one of the top five trilogies of all time I really like this. I like like yeah. I can't really think of a lot of other trilogies, especially horror. This is probably my favorite horror trilogy ever. Okay, I would put this over any three Nightmare on Elm Streets, any three Friday the Thirteenth, any three Halloweens. Except for Halloween three. No, no, no. I'm saying if I <laughs> if you put three, if you line up three from any series next to these three Conjuring movies as a whole, I would pick The Conjuring probably over any any other horror season series it's not gonna be star wars four five or six nothing ever will. no um, I, I don't know i feel like or uh lord of the rings but night day and dawn are still my shit i mean it i mean yeah of the dead i know i know it's because you're zombies um but for, i really liked this this was for really me really the fun. only thing the only thing that would beat this is if they made a cry wolf two and three ew <laughs> Ew! Just stop. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so, but but yeah, no, I I really I really like this movie. I really love the whole trilogy so far. Um, I'm not gonna watch the doll movies because screw that. You your kid watched those with me. Mm -hmm. We had like a marathon, me and him, in the fucking dark. I stayed back <laughs> here watching all the Annabelle movies, no, watching the doll movies, nope, and the nope, cats nope. like to jump on you when it's dark. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yep. scare the shit out of mm -hmm. each other. That's oh. great. All right, tell them where to find us. You can find... Well, before you do that, if you haven't yet, please do subscribe. We'd love to have you. Hit the bell for all notifications of further uploads and live He's streams. Like down here somewhere. Somewhere down there. Please hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, or you could hit the thumbs up if you also get just bombarded by cats randomly because you love them. Or if you like men with ponytails. Look at my hair. It's so great. Oh yeah? Oh yeah? Look at that. Look at that. We have matching hairstyles only. We do have people. matching hairstyles. <laughs> We're that couple. Oh my god. What is wrong with us? You can find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter, Instagram, and now TikTok at Reanimator. You can find our reviews together as well as solo reviews on itunes thank you to the farsighted network please don't forget to check out all of their awesome creators and content as well we're gonna find you you can find me on twitch under repeat ray animator you can also find me i don't know why i said it weird like that you can also find me on twitch under repeat groom ray you can also find me on tiktok under repeat ray animator links are in the description and we hope that you're conjuring up a great start to your oh summer God. or whatever it is. And I will see y'all after eye surgery, hopefully. Right, bye. Bye. Audio. Like a Audio. cat puking. Ugh, <laughs> oh, that's the worst sound ever. <laughs>